So today is about stereographic photography, as you can see. Uh, did you guys know that Brian May, the famous guitarist and songwriter, is a fan of stereographic photography? If you didn't know, he has a book and it's definitely worth a read. I'll show it to you guys. Uh, I hope you can see it. Yeah. I just want to mention the book because it's really cool. <laughs> I got myself again in a big project and it's all my fault. Because in November last year, I went with my girlfriend to an exhibition in Vienna. It's called Dreidimensionale. It was about stereographic photography and holographic photography. And I thought it was pretty cool to go there and to see something else sometimes. And when I arrived there, it was like really interesting. Uh, we went through all the pictures and at some point I saw a wet plate camera. So I saw a stereo wet plate camera. And I thought, hmm, this could be pretty cool to do self a, a stereo wet plate. <laughs> I had no idea what I would get myself into with that thought. So I thought, okay, let's build a, a stereographic camera, a stereographic wet plate camera like this one I have here on my side. But I want to tell you guys the story, how long it took and what it took to make the thing happen. When I look back right now, somehow I hoped I would never have seen this camera again because I would have saved like six months of my time. But on the other side, it was pretty cool to do this project. It was really nice to, to get into the topic of stereographic photography. It all began uh, after the exhibition. I talked to a good friend of mine and he told me, maybe it's, it's a good idea to read a book about stereographic photography before I build a camera. So he brought me the book, I showed it to you guys. I did a little uh, censorship on the cover, but it's a German book and it's really, really cool. The author is uh, Gerhard Kuhn and for all uh, German speaking people, I can recommend this one. If you want to go uh, get into stereographic photography, it's really good and it's, even if it doesn't look that thick, it's a lot to read and a lot to understand. I did that in my uh, vacation on Portugal. I was there for two weeks and I read every evening about two or three hours. And about at the end of the vacation, I figured out what it takes and I knew it takes much more than to put two lenses side by side on a camera to get a cool 3D effect. And that's all when it started. Okay, let's build a camera. And as you guys can imagine, I didn't want to build a small camera. I wanted to build a big stereo camera. Now I started to make plans to modify my camera. And because I wanted to shoot wet plates, I wanted to use two Petzval design lenses. And to get two Petzval design lenses, they are focusing on the same spot. <laughs> no, just don't do it. It's really stupid because the lenses are pretty old. It took me a long time to find a second one that focused similar to the first one I already had. So just forget it, buy two lenses that are, are the same and you, you're happy. You don't want to go through all the trouble I went and some of the guys in the wet plate community know what I'm talking about and they're laughing, I guess, but <laughs> just don't do it. A short story I forgot to tell you guys. I went to some stores in Vienna to look for a vintage uh, lens that fits to my own. I think it was, I went to the Leica shop, I'm not sure. But uh, after I told the shop assistant what I want to do, he said, <laughs> I'm so happy I'm not doing this project. <laughs> and I thought maybe he's right. Yeah, after I finally found the second lens I was looking for, now the planning and the building process started. Uh, I wanted the lens to be movable, so I get a nice 3D effect and not a flat wallpaper. For example, if you shoot a landscape in 3D, uh, it can easily be possible that the distance between the two lenses must be one kilometer. So you take a shot here, go one kilometer to another side and take a second shot. So you get a nice uh, a 3D effect of a landscape. That means uh, the closer the subject is, the closer the lenses must be together. And if you want to get really close, uh, it's pretty cool if you can tilt the lenses that way. So uh, you get still a 3D effect if you shoot macros. And this was what I was planning for. That means I had to do a movable and tiltable lens board with an adaptive shutter. So I'm able to do uh, two exposures at the same time of the wet plate. <laughs> Are your minds already cringing with this thought? 
Some of the stuff I have to read now from my MacBook because I don't remember everything I had to buy. The hardware store was like my second home. I had to get so many different parts like hinges, screws, wooden parts, I don't know, paint for the wood, paste. And the more I went in there, the more I figured uh, what I need. Yeah, like an I needed an adap adapter ring for the lens because one of the lenses was focusing really like uh, four or five millimeters on a different uh, spot. So I made a ring for it, but at the end I didn't I need it all the time. Yeah, the next thing is uh, I'm not a carpenter, so I have a lot of tools at home, but I don't have all the tools to press the things together. That's the reason my house looked like a workshop for some days, weeks, month. Yeah, the next thing uh, I needed was uh, a separation inside the bellow. So uh, the image circle of the two lenses do not overlap on the plate or on the ground glass. And that's uh, when I invented the things uh, I'm gonna show you guys here. Uh, it's maybe not the best uh, invention I did, but it was easy and, and it was is easy to do. Uh, and it worked at the end. It's I got a good separation. I get some. I got sometimes, depending on the light, a little bit brighter uh, uh, line in the middle. But I had. I think it's. It doesn't bother the picture. Yeah, maybe I just put in here now a, a short gallery so you guys have an idea what I was working on. And uh, uh, I just let you watch some of my uh, craftsmanship masterpieces I did during the month of building this camera. point that was the day when uh, I really finished uh, the camera when the last glue was dried when all the screws were in place and I didn't have to see any hardware store again I'm not sure how it's in your country but here if you go to a hardware store it's like you don't find anybody you can ask something and if you find somebody you can ask something uh, the guy uh, just tells you he's not responsible for this department and then you went to the next guy and I think you know what I'm, what I'm saying and what I was going through. So yeah, it's funny now to talk about it, but if you are living, no, I was not living, but if you really stay that long in a hardware store, at some point you just want to get out there. <laughs> a friend of mine told me, it will take a long time for you to adjust the lenses the right way to get a nice 3D effect. And he was really right. I think it took forever to adjust the lenses and get everything right. And the problem I had with that was I was shooting outside and it was getting dark. So my exposure was pretty long. I think the first exposure was uh, one minute or something. And I wanted to do a second one, but I don't even was able to do the second one because it was too dark. I think the second exposure was about four minutes or five minutes and I had still a dark plate. So there's only one plate from that shot. And i uh, show you now some pictures from the, sh from the shooting and afterwards I'll show you uh, the finished plate. That's the first plate I did. I felt like a little kid in front of the Christmas tree. It was so nice to see the 3D effect and if you wonder how I can see the 3D effect, I'm using a special... Uh, you need special uh, goggles to be able to see uh, the 3D effect when the pictures are that big. Smaller pictures you can watch cross-eyed, so if you like focus on the pictures and, and put them together in the center. But with the bigger ones you need the glasses. And these are the glasses that I'm uh, using for that. You have two mirrors that you can adjust and so you can put the two uh, pictures together and see the 3D effect. Uh, if you want to buy these glasses, I put the link down uh, into the description, but I will talk later about it again. So the second time I wanted to shoot flowers, so that's what I'm talking about is 3D macro shots on the wet plate camera. This time I counted the minutes and hours it took to make these two plates, so I will tell you after you see uh, some of the making of pictures, but 
During the shoot, uh, first of all, I did the shoot in my studio, so don't, I don't depend on daylight. And during the shoot, I figured that one of the lenses is a little bit brighter than the other one. And I tried to compensate that with uh, changing the aperture a little bit. So what I was dealing with was uh, moving the lenses into the right place, uh, tilting the lenses for the macro shots, uh, adjusting the uh, brightness, uh, the different brightness of the lenses, uh, working with the whole wet plate process. So my mind was really like working on 110%. It was really stressful. And uh, I'll show you some behind the scenes shoot footage right now. And at the end of it, I'll tell you the rest. Because I stopped the lenses more down, I'm not sure, I was shooting at f12 or maybe f14 to get uh, enough focus for the macro shots. I had to use all the power I have in my studio and luckily I was able to get another generator from Hansel. Now I have the Tria 6000 and the Tria 3000 and with the 1000 compact flash so I was able to shoot the flowers with about 10,000 watt. And what I didn't thought about was the uh, modeling light was pretty bright. So one of the flowers got burned a little bit on one place, but at the end it looked really cool on the wet plate. So I really needed all the power to get uh, everything done in one single exposure. Yeah, and I got really uh, clean plates out of this project. Uh, because I was tilting the lenses a little bit, the 3D effect of one of the flowers is really uh, big is it the right word to say but i think so it's it's really popping uh out of the plate and now guess how many hours it took me to make two plates it was seven hours i'm happy that my brother alex helped me thanks for helping me and for doing the documentation while i was running around like crazy so i had a little bit more time uh to figure out what's going on with uh, the whole process and he was, I think he was laughing sometimes at me because I was like the crazy professor here in my studio. Yeah, and the, both of the flowers looked really great. The 3D effect was really nice. 
and uh, I want to show you the final outcome. So maybe they look a little bit dark, but uh, if you see if you look at them with the uh, goggles, it's really really nice. So I'll show you the second one as well. So yeah, can you see it like that? It's always a little bit tricky to get the reflection out of the way. Yeah, that's the second one. Uh, I will try to post uh, some side-by-side -side images so we can uh, get an idea how cool the 3D effect of uh, the flowers are. And I was really happy that they are turned out that clean. So these are my floating flowers. <laughs> now it was time for the final two plates. And of course I chose my favorite subject, portraits. It all started again to figure out the right settings for uh, uh, the portrait. And I was very lucky to get Clarissa for the shooting. She was like perfect for the kind of portrait I wanted to do. Thanks again for all your patience <laughs> during the shoot because I can say right now we, it took another seven hours, I guess, until we finished the two plates. Uh, but it was really, really cool. And I really liked the outcome a lot. So I show you guys again some of the behind the scenes footage now and we'll tell you afterwards a little bit more about the shooting. Wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one, wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one, wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one, wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one. Shooting 3D portraits, that's something totally different than shooting a normal portrait because I had to really think everything. A normal portrait would be very simple, mostly I like to do simple portraits, but uh, if you shoot a 3D portrait, you want to stick something out of the plate. I guess you know what I mean. So uh, I told Clarissa to bring a wrinkly shirt so it gets more 3D, everything, there's a wrinkle. And uh, there's another problem. Normally I would say maybe like, hold this camera like here and it, it pops out of the plate, but you can't do that because uh, during the battery coloring process and doing uh, with the large format cameras, you have very shallow depth of field. So I had to stop down a little bit the lenses to be able uh, to get more depth of field, but I couldn't stop them down that much because 
I only have 10,000 watts of power and I don't want to use them during a portrait shoot all the time because it's a lot of light you are releasing to your model. So I had to figure out a nice balance between uh, getting a nice 3D effect, getting a nice portrait and don't overdo everything. So we, we did a lot of posing and we did a lot of testing with the digital camera before we, we shot some sample images and uh, I show you like for the camera shot we tried to use a bigger camera at the beginning because I thought it looked cool but uh, it didn't look cool because the camera was too big and, and Clarissa, my subject was Clarissa not the camera so we changed that again. I always have to look in between uh, onto my MacBook because there's so much stuff I want to tell you and I hope I don't forget everything so I wrote a lot of stuff down. Yeah, and you saw, you saw the big accident that happened during uh, the first plate. That was because I was doing the wet plate process, I was trying to take care about all the things all around and I was filming. So uh, it looked like the tray is on a safe place, but the water came back with a wave and all the uh, developer and water just hit the ground. But yeah, I just tried to stay as cool as possible because I already saw the plate was really, uh, turned out really nice and it was not the happiest thing in during this project, but I just needed a lot of paper towels to be able to uh, get rid of the mess and everything was fine afterwards. And now comes the part where I really would like that all of you guys are standing here in my studio and would be able to see these plates in person with the goggles, because there's so much details in the plate. The, the, the 3D effect is so nice, you can see like the little camera popping out or the shoulder of Clarissa popping out. You even can see that she has round eyeballs. It's really, really cool. I want to show you uh, the finished pictures. That's the first one. It would be really cool if you guys could see the pictures here in my studio with the goggles because the detail is really amazing. And it's so cool to see this uh, wet plate come to life. At the end of the video I have, or at the end of the second plate, I have a little surprise for you. I hope you guys like it. And yeah, I'll just show you the next plate. So this is the second plate, that's my favorite one. I just like the look of Clarissa, I like how the little camera turned out on the plate, I like the detail on it, I like the, the 3D effect. It's really, really cool. I'm like a little kid in front of the Christmas tree. Uh, it's like, it smells uh, still, uh, it smells like the lavender from the varnish. I can smell it through the uh, frame. I, every time I come home, I, I just put the goggles on and, and look at the plate, it's so nice. It's, the varnish is nice on it and I like it in this frame. So uh, they, all the plates will be for sale on my website. It's, this one is gonna be hard for me to let go. But because I still want you guys to be able maybe to get one of these, uh, I had an idea. So I talked with my printing company and uh, so more people can enjoy uh, these two wet plates I did, the stereo wet plates. Uh, we figured out to do uh, a limited edition of 10 uh, prints. They are done on uh, luster paper, really, really nice quality. And I hope I do it. Yeah. I will sell on my web, uh, web page uh, only 10 prints of this one. And uh, in a second, 10 prints of this one. Uh, I remember when I did the snowdrop uh, plate, it was like sold in two days. And these are really nice prints, so just have a look at my website if you want one of them. Uh, I sell them there and they are not that expensive and believe me, you're gonna enjoy this one. <laughs> I will pause with stereo wet plates for a while because they are consuming so much energy from me during a shoot, but maybe if there comes the right motivation for a portrait, Brian May, wink wink. <laughs> uh, I'll do one, but otherwise I'll just, I'll pause for it. But don't you worry, I have uh, some other projects coming up. They're really fun and they're all wet plate based. But before I end this vlog, I want to show you another camera. Maybe if you've seen the project already on some websites I did with the little Polaroid camera. Uh, first, I, I, first I just bought this because I thought I can do uh, stereo pictures with it because I couldn't do like two shots uh, at one time on a plate. But the lenses are uh, fixed focus lenses and uh, the focus distance is also fixed. So 
you just have to measure one meter twenty with the thing, and at this distance there is like no 3D effect at all. But we still did uh, some uh, cool experiments, like I did in the in the project before. But I did some cool blades with uh, Clarissa too. I will show you the blades, and I was surprised how much detail there is uh, when I shoot with this camera. I did a scan, and I will do a zoom in the video into the scan, and <laughs> you are you gonna be amazed how much detail uh, there is on a wet plate with this camera. That's the end of my video. You can follow me on all the socials with at MH Austria. You can find all the links below. Don't worry, there are a lot of interesting wet plates project coming up, like another macro video, another macro wet plate, I guess. But this time, different one. I just talked on Facebook with a guy two days ago. Maybe we do something like that. And uh, subscribe to my channel to get more of the wet plate stuff. And I'll be back, guys.